Hello again, Jules fans. Welcome back to Jules in the Blood TV for another episode as I look back at the weekend, Easter as a whole, and more specifically, uh, South End on Monday. Um, and then I look forward to this Saturday's game as we host Doncaster Rovers. Um, but first, obviously, we have to talk about Easter. No points from the two games, unfortunately. Uh, performance at home at MK Dons wasn't disastrous, but equally it wasn't the best as we went down 2-1. Um, and then Monday. Oh, Monday. Um, didn't do our jobs properly effectively is what Steve Lovell said. So I'm going to have a let you look at the quote. Here it comes on your screen now, Jules fans. As you can see from that, Steve Lovell's quote, uh, sometimes something like this gives you a kick up the backside. It makes you realise that it is not all easy. Um, it was a horror show. There's no way we can dress it up, sugarcoat it, pretend it didn't happen. It was it was horrible from start to finish. We were 3-0 down inside 18 minutes, four down after 40 minutes, and then we had our captain sent off for a stupid lunge. A um, few people at the time tweeted and, and spoke to me at half-time in the ground and said they didn't think it was a red. I said from the way we, where we were sitting, myself, Stocky and James, it looked a straight red. He looked out of control. He was off the floor. Um, it could have endangered the the, the uh, South End player. And for me, I haven't changed my mind since seeing the footage. The referee got it spot on and we now lose the skipper, Lee Martin, for four games. Um, a little bit more from Steve. Um who describes the performance like this, it wasn't because of effort, just simple things like marking and doing the things that we have worked on. I thought we got exposed down our left early on a lot because of people not doing their job properly. You can't have that. Um, yeah, it was a disaster, an absolute disaster. Um, I said that only probably Thomas only come out of that first half with any modicum of credit and even then, it's his slice clearance that leads to the corner for the first goal, which isn't great. But for me, he was the only one out of 11 out there during the first period that actually had an impact in a positive way in terms of affecting the scoreline, in terms of them not getting any more. He made a couple of really good saves. He even made a good save in the build-up, in the leading up to the second goal and then got no help from his defenders who just stood there and ball-watched ball watched and didn't react to Theo Robinson slapping in a rebound. The first goal we didn't learn from. Uh, Michael Turner had already had one free header. We didn't pick him up. We got away with it minutes later. We got another one. Edited it in the bottom corner with no one within a million miles of him. It looked second goal. Like I just said, Thomas Holy makes a good save. We stand there staring at the rebound and Robinson slaps it in for his first goal in a year. Must have thought it was Christmas. Third goal comes off the crossbar um, from Stephen McLaughlin. I think it was his shot. No one's near Michael Cartley, nods in a rebound from a couple of yards out and we're all stood gawping at each other again, looking around, looking at each other to take responsibility. And the fourth goal is another free header. Stephen McLaughlin loves a goal against us. Um, just disaster after disaster after disaster. Um, I've already mentioned Connor Ogilvy. I thought it was a bit harsh on him. I don't think he was to blame for all three goals and I think he's become a bit of a scapegoat but obviously we had to make changes because we were we were getting absolutely battered and it could have been a cricket score and he got hooked. It could have been one of one of ten outfield players um, and none of them could have complained really so he had to be one. It was Connor Ogilvy. He was the unfortunate one. Um, just frustrating because like I said Maybe under Adrian Pennant, no disrespect to Adrian, we was we sort of became accustomed to performances like that being chucked in. But the biggest frustration for me in the ground and talking to Stocky and James and others in the ground on Monday was that we just didn't see it coming at all under Steve Lovell. We've been massively improved since he took over. We've been super organised in games and we've been in every game really. So to be out of it after 20 minutes was was astonishing. Um, but let's just hope that it's. Um, a massive blip and a one-off and we react properly this Saturday. I'm going to do... Um, oh, yeah, just a bit on that from Steve Lovell as well in the paper, um, who says, I feel sorry for all the supporters. They supported us in the numbers, but it was one of the most disappointing first halves I think I've ever been involved in because I didn't see that coming at all. And sometimes like this hit you, I really don't know where it came from. 
exactly what we've said. And finally, Luke Cordell's report. Um, I always do the last paragraph and it reads, this was as bad a performance as any in recent years and in complete contrast how things have been going in recent months. Here's hoping it's a one-off. Of course, because if that becomes the norm, we could get dragged back in. Talk of playoffs has swiftly dissipated now. It's not going to happen. We're 11 points outside the top six with seven games to go. I think the gap to the bottom four is now down to about nine, and I think Oldham have got a game in hand. I still don't think we'll get relegated, and I'm still being positive, and I don't think we'll get dragged into any real danger, but it would be nice to get to 50 or 51 points sooner rather than later because it has taken longer than we expected. Um, especially after that excellent second uh, second half performance at Portsmouth a few weeks ago. Um, already mentioned Lee Martin briefly. Stupidity, unfortunately, did a survey on Twitter uh, yesterday and today asking what people's thoughts were him in terms of captain. Over 50% have said they still want him to keep the armband. Um, I think it was about 37% said... They think it should be taken away from him and he's not suitable as a leader. And 7% said we should release him. Um, I'm in the camp firmly, which is he's a very good footballer. Um, but at the same time, he needs to he needs to rein it in and realise that there's a line between being a leader and sticking up for your teammates, etc. And crossing that line and becoming a hindrance. Because as good as you are, Lee, if you're not playing and you've now missed seven games through suspension this season doesn't matter how good you are if you're stuck in the stands you can't be a leader you can't be creative you can't do anything if you're stuck in the stands and not playing football matches so he's probably missed unfortunately by the time the season comes round to the end of it sorry he's probably going to have missed at least a dozen games through suspension and injury and illness which is annoying because it was only a few weeks ago I was on here praising his performance at Portsmouth and how good he'd been um, and he has I'm not going to change that one one stupid error doesn't doesn't change the fact that he's been very impressive for us in recent months but it's these sort of things that we've got. To, he's got to cut out of his game. I feel um, because, like I say, there's there's being a leader and sticking up for your teammates, etc. And then there's crossing the line and bordering onto stupidity and recklessness, which is what he did on Monday. Um, but anyway, that's enough about that. Let's do a little bit of news in brief now. Um, firstly, um, there's a piece about Navid Nasseri in the paper, um, who done very well on his full debut last week at home to MK Don, scored a really good goal, was very bright throughout. Thought it was really harsh that he didn't start on Monday. I could understand at the time that you get your captain back in, but with hindsight, <laughs> wasn't the best decision, was it, because of what Lee Martin ended up doing, but everybody can you know, know what's going on with the benefit of hindsight. It's just one of them. We have to deal with it now. We don't see Lee Martin for the next four, but um, New Jules deal is the priority for Navin the He wants to get his head down. Um, he says, I want to put my stamp on the league. Hopefully I can get some more goals and assists before the end of the season so people start turning in and the gaffer can see what I can do for the next season. I think from the two games I've shown glimpses of what I can do and there is definitely more to come as well. I'm excited and happy to be part of it. I think he's been really good in the two games that we've seen him. Even on Monday, he came on really difficult circumstances. 4-0 down, down to 10 men. He kept wanting the ball. He worked hard. He was willing to run with it and drive us forward. Um, and he was probably one of our best players. I know that's no glowing reference because the rest were an absolute sham, in fairness. But, um, yeah, so hopefully he'll get an extended run. Um, other bits are, there's a small piece about the club uh, thinking about appealing the Lee Martin red card, but I think that decision has been made now that they're not going to do it, and he's definitely being banned for four games. Steve Lovell spoke about the two uh, Tom Eves goals that were disallowed, said he had no arguments about either, and said it's frustrating that Tom keeps getting in good positions, and he's probably had half a dozen goals ruled out due to not looking along the line this season. A little bit harsh, I feel, in my own opinion, Steve digging him out. Um, I thought the second goal he scored, I thought was perfectly legit, but... We couldn't tell for the first one, it was at the other end, but it is what it is, you can't change it. And reference Monday again, players were on Twitter apologising, senior pros Mark Byrne, Gabriel Zaquani and Max Amar all took to social media to apologise. In fairness to a lot of them, it was great for them to come out and actually admit and just say it wasn't good enough and sorry and it won't happen again because I think they'd have got a lot of stick if they'd come out and tried to dress it up, I think everyone would have, but... Um, as I say, it's done now. We move on. It's all about how we react on Saturday against Doncaster. <coughs> Excuse me. Hopefully, if we can pick up three points, 
then we can relax and enjoy the last half dozen games and maybe blood a few of those that have not got so many minutes recently. Um, final bit in the news in brief is Gillingham paid just over 17000 in agents fees over a one year period which was the lowest in League One. Some might use that as a stick to beat the chairman with but I have an opinion on agents, they're not the best are they? Generally they don't look after their footballers, they're there to you know make their percentage. Um, it just says during the period the Jills completed deals for four players which involved payments to agents, permanent deals for Alex Lacey, Connor Wilkinson, uh, Gabriel Zaquari and Billy Bingham amounted to payment for agent fees totaling £17,030. That figure is up from 10750 the year before and 2500 for a two, a 12 month period prior to that. Blackburn Rovers were League One's highest spenders on fees, shelling out £764,024 among their payments was to Gavin Dawes of Unique Sport Management representing Bradley Dack during his £750,000 move from the Jules. Big difference shows you what we're competing with. So if you're looking for some perspective and how we've done under Steve Lovell, that's what we're up against. Um, but that's enough of the news in brief. And now I'm going to talk about the biggest thing coming up in the next couple of days, and that is Doncaster Rovers at home. Looking at the corresponding form of the two sides overall and then obviously home and away for the respective outfits, it makes for what should be quite an even and good, an interesting game. If we look at the last six overall, um, we've only taken four points from the last 18. It's, it's our worst run under Steve. We've only won one and drawn one and lost four in the last six, losing the last three on the bounce. Um, Doncaster have picked up three wins and a draw, two defeats in the last six, which is 10 points from 18 as opposed to our four so they're in better form recently. But to counter that, if you look at us at home, we've taken nine points from the last 18 at home, which is two wins, three draws, and that defeat last week at home to MK Dons. But away from home, they've only taken six points from the last 18 available. They've won their most recent one, but before that it was three defeats and then two defeats on the uh, three draws and two defeats on the bounce. Um, as I've just said, it's our worst run under Steve Lovell. Lost the last three. Um, we've only won two of the last six at home at the Priestfield, but to counter that, we've only lost two under Steve Lovell at home in 12 league games. So hard to beat, but just struggling to break teams down sufficiently to get over the line and pick up maximum points more regularly than, than we have done. Um, Doncaster, only four away wins all season in the league and only um, two from their last 13 on the road. Um, but yeah, they have taken seven points from their last three games in the league, so they're going to be arriving in Kent probably full of a bit of confidence. Um, Steve Lovell's made an interesting quote and said it looks like they've made up their mind on most players regarding um, new contracts and who's going to be getting offered um, new deals, if anything at all, and what. Um, but if we can get to 50 points as quick as possible, then obviously we can have a look at others that haven't had so many minutes and, and it gives them a chance to still prove their worth and push for a, push their case for a new contract. So that'd be good to see. Um, looking at Doncaster, a couple of ex-Jules players in there. Um, John Marquis, we had him on loan a few seasons ago. Um, done really well. Partnered Cody McDonald back end of the 2014-15 season. Um, he's got 12 in 43 this season. So it's proved that he can step up, scoring roughly one in every three and a half, which isn't too bad. So you'd think... He might get to 15 by the end of the season with another seven games, which would mark a decent return as he'd come back into League One after firing them to the League Two promotion last season. Um, Jordan Houghton, another one we had on loan a couple of seasons ago, started off really well for us in midfield and then seemingly fell out with Justin Edinburgh. Didn't get looking for a while before going back to Chelsea. He's made 33 appearances for Doncaster in all competitions this year, so a couple of um, returning loan stars will be at the ground on Saturday. So it'll be interesting to see how they get on. James Coppinger, Peter Pan of Doncaster, just keeps going. 37 years old now, but he scored five in 38 appearances this season, still pulling the strings for them. So, um, And finally, Alfie May, I believe, was at Hyde a couple of seasons ago. He's got six in 27, um, which ain't too bad, because I think a lot of his appearances have come from the bench. So one in four, not too bad. If you're a substitute, probably take that. Um, in terms of us, team news, um, still no Aaron Morris. Um, I don't think we'll see him in a dual shirt again, unfortunately. No Billy Bingham, they're the long term too. And then Luke O'Neill looks highly unlikely to be um, featuring. Um, done a groin on Monday, it looks like. And Josh Parker is still out with a thigh strain. I saw on Instagram that he replied to someone today. He looks like hopeful to be back for Tuesday night against Blackburn, so he's out for Saturday. And obviously Lee Martin misses the next four through suspension. So in terms of a team... 
just been having a look at it. Obviously, you'd think we're probably going to make a couple of changes and freshen it up a bit after the disaster of Monday. But at the same time, I don't want us to be making massive wholesale changes to a side that has generally been very good for the last six months. Um, so looking at that, looking at those that are missing and those that are maybe available and coming back to fitness, I'm going to go for four four two diamond. I think it's imperative that we get back to that because we've been very good with that system. Um, Josh Parker and Tom Eve excelled as a partnership in, in that system, scored a lot of goals together. They've both gone off the boil. Obviously, Josh Parker's missed the last two or three because of injury and um, international um, duty. Tom Eaves is going through a rough patch. I think he's only scored two since January, but he's still our top scorer, so I would definitely start him. Um, right, so my team would be in full. I'd go Thomas Holy in goal. I would play Bradley Garmston at left back, and I would play Scott Wagstaff at right back. Um, I think that would still give us an attacking option from full back on both sides. Um, they both work hard, both provide decent pace. Um, Scott Wagstaff's fielded there plenty of times and is defensively sound enough to play there for me. Um, I know some might say it's square pegs, round holes a little bit, but we haven't got another out and out right back and I don't want us to play um, three at the back and Finn O'Mara would be an option, but I just think during this tricky period it's probably best just to leave him out for now. Um, so yeah, I'd go Bradley Garmston left back, Scott Wagstaff right back, two central defenders keep their place for me. Last week aside, they've been very, very good for a long time, so that'd be Max Amar and Gabriel Zaquani. My midfield four in the diamond, I'd play Mark Byrne at the base. I know a few don't think he's, he's a natural sitting midfielder, but I'd stick him there either side of him. I'd have Jake Hess and Tyler on the right, and I'd play Frank Musa from the left. I think we need to have a look at him. I think he could offer something. Um, he's just been waiting patiently for a chance. He's only had 20 minutes, I think, so far at Wigan and done OK when he came on. So I'd start him. And at the point of the diamond, Naveed Nasseri deserves to start for me. He's done enough in his two appearances over the last week to, to prove that he, he deserves to be starting football matches. And up front, I'll go with Tom Eaves alongside Connor Wilkinson. I know a few don't rate him, but I just think it's unfair on Connor um, to be writing him off so quickly. I thought it was a little bit harsh that he didn't start on Monday. Um, he's watched Josh Parker and Tom Eaves play as a pair all season and score goals. And then he, he come on at Portsmouth, scored a really good goal, earned himself a start. And then we went back to one up top for some reason. And he's he's been left isolated on the whole. So... Um, and, and Monday, I think, is a write-off. You can't really judge too much. yet to come on after 25 minutes and we were 3-0 down, which is, was always a, an uphill task, an impossible task, probably. Um, so, yeah, that's my team. Thomas Holy, Bradley Garmston, Max Amar, Gabriel Zaquani, Scott Wagstaff, Mark Byrne, Jake Hess and Tyler, Frank Musa, Navi Nasseri, Tom Eads and Connor Wilkinson. And my bench would be Thomas Hadler, Alex Lacey, because he can fill in across all four positions in the back four, Ben Nugent, uh, Connor Riley, Elliot List, Liam Nash and Reese Murphy. Um, one that is missing is Connor Ogilvy, and I said I thought Monday was harsh on him, but I just think after that happens, he's still a kid at the end of the day. I'd probably just give him a week away from it. We're going to have to rotate a little bit because we've got a lot of games coming up in April because of um, two uh, postponed fixtures back in March and February due to the snow. So I'd leave him out of the 18 this week. Um, prediction time. We're not playing great. Confidence has probably taken a bit of a dent regardless of what people say. But I'm going to say if we play the right system, and for me that is 4-4-2 diamond, make us compact. Uh, we can get our fullbacks pushing on when we need to, but remain solid. And if we do that and play to our potential, um, our home form's not disastrous. Yes, we've not won enough games, but we don't lose a lot. So if we do that, 4-4-2 diamond, play to our uh, full capacity, I am going to say Gillingham 2, Doncaster 1. Uh, three points would get us to 52 and see us safe for the season and then hopefully we can enjoy the last half dozen games last three weeks of the campaign in terms of goal scores I'm going to go John Marquis for Doncaster and I'm going to go Tom Eaves and Frank Musa for the Jules right that is all from me we will see you Saturday I believe it's me and Dave and Dave and Matty are going to be doing the match day live Stocky will be there as well I believe so hopefully we can all get involved uh, throughout the game, before, during and after, etc, etc. Um, we're up to 736 subscribers now. If you can all spread the word, we'd love to get to 750 as soon as possible. As always, thanks for watching. Um, looking forward to Saturday. We need to get last Monday out of our systems. And until next time, up the jewels.